live, Faraday High School, Faraday, Louisiana, joining us. Um, he ain't no baby, he ain't no, he ain't, can I say it? Yeah, he ain't no baby no more. He uh, out that Similac, man. He been here before. <laughs> coach Sean Davis, head boys basketball coach. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Hey, great, man. Good I'm, seeing you again. No doubt, man. Absolutely wonderful. It was good seeing you guys at the Jazz Clark. Um, Clark Christmas Classic. Well, I ain't enjoy seeing them. I mean, <laughs> we didn't show up those two games at all. Hey, but for me, I didn't, I didn't see you uh, in in a few months, and you know, Fairy used to be home for me. I was mm -hmm. here a whole lot, and you know, we had a regime change. But look like I may be may be back now. I got you. How, how, have, you how have you been, man? Still, still making a transition. Still making a transition. Uh, you know, I think we. Uh, Year two is going a little bit better in school than year one. I just got more wins right now at the point we had this part last year and everything. Uh, uh, more talented players, not knocking the players, but the skill level a little bit better. The talent level a little bit better also. But you lost three seniors. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to get into that. Because okay. I knew two of them could flat out ball. Mm -hmm. Two of the three could flat out ball. Yeah. So we're going to get to into that later. But the the process of transitioning in, in a space where now you're comfortable with the majority of the team, they may not be comfortable with you because you're big on discipline. What was that process like in the off season and getting guys to come and be a part of summer workouts and summer basketball and all the other processes that make things better? Yeah, but no more. We did a lot of different things this summer. We did you know travel ball. And we had, uh, it's like, it wasn't necessarily mandatory. Mandatory to come to practice, at least at 10, 80 to 90 percent. We had a one, I mean, we got the summer workouts and, you know, in the summertime, trying to balance that, with having fun, all that kind of stuff. So, for instance, you got 10 practice, you got at least uh, 10, at least eight of them, uh, eight, nine. Right. Every day to kind of mess around. So, but still, you know, for the most part, uh, for the most part, they did the 10, majority of the workouts for the most part. I, I want to ask you this. Um, take it how you want to. I don't care. Okay. You being a guy that, that served 20 plus years in the military, how does that help you? You didn't think I knew that, did you? I didn't know that. I, know I that. do my homework, man. Okay. okay. Um, how, how does that help you from a discipline aspect in helping these young men who need discipline become better listeners, better followers, and eventually better leaders? Well, I mean, for military, I mean, just military, but just, you know, the parents upbringing, that kind of stuff also, I mean, uh, time is your greatest asset, and you got to, you know, make sure you take uh, every opportunity to maximize your time. Maximize your time every time you get an opportunity. Uh, you got to transfer to military life. You want to practice at, at three o'clock. You expect practice to be at three o'clock. Right. You got to have a nine to five job when you can't just show up at at nine o'clock or nine o one. You're late. Right. My uncle always had the thing is, if you work at nine o'clock, you need to be at eight fifty five. Nine o'clock means you're late. So five and get yourself together. Uh, uh, we really haven't had a problem. We had normal little chit chat kind of stuff. For the most part, this this team here been kind of well different for the most part, and a little bit different, different from this year to last year. These guys police themselves, you know. Uh, case in point, at the uh, J.S. Clark uh, tournament. I mean, we didn't have to say anything. Paul and and Roger. I mean, we had a couple of play, uh, a player in particular that kind of missed practice those week and didn't show up. Didn't show up like he normally shows up, and we just stood back and the team police themselves. Hey man, you let us down. This is your fault. Right. You knocked us completely out of rhythm. You messed up the rotation, and so I think I mean we harp on everything. I think it kind of just translated down to the uh, players and their police themselves. Uh, accountability, accountability is becoming a part of the discussion every day. Good. And wasn't as much last year, <laughs> but now this year you can kind of see it kind of growing. <laughs> Yeah. And maybe, maybe not at all the year before. Okay, but they didn't play the year before, though, huh? Well, they think. played a couple of games, okay. I think. Okay, I think and, and, and then the, the, the school shut. Okay, the school shut down. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay, I thought they just didn't play yeah. any games. The year all. before they didn't play. Okay. any games, but the okay. year after they played a few games. Okay, okay. okay. Um, and then it was a big COVID outbreak okay. amongst some of. Yeah, but school. like I so said, you can kind of see the growth and the right. accountability and everything, as opposed to last year. When, 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 when you're, you know, and, and I even do this, like sometimes I go back and, and if I did a game and I was not feeling like I have a, a great joy behind the camera. Mm -hmm. um, 
it, it, it gives me life and energy. And sometimes I have to go back and visualize the game. Mm -hmm. That happens with you guys. Do y'all go back and visualize the game and discuss, okay, if we've done this okay. versus that, or if we integrate this into the program, how will this make us better? Uh, does, does that happen for you guys? Yeah, I mean, you meet after the game, you kind of, you know, uh, it's kind of like a road game. You discuss some stuff on the bus, and they would talk about it the next day. But the coaches, you go home and you debrief when you sleep. You can't sleep. Your wife gets mad. You still <laughs> talking about basketball and all that kind of stuff. But once you come together and kind of watch the film, and, and sometimes you watch the film and say, hey, man, they, they didn't, really didn't do bad. You know what right. I'm saying? Miss a couple layups here, a couple turnovers here, maybe a bad substitution here, that kind of stuff like that. You kind of, you know, debrief from that. You come back the next day and you work on that stuff at practice and hopefully clean it all up. Right. It's just an ongoing process. It's always something to work on. Right. You, you, you lose Swanson. You lose Carson's. Um, I, I can't. I've been trying to think for the last five minutes while asking questions mm -hmm. of the third senior's name that y'all lost. Uh, Sponge, last name. Sponge. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, Finister. Yeah. yeah. Finister. Yeah. Um, Carson. Carson was your avid post player. Mm -hmm. um, pretty solid. Pretty solid. Great frame. Swanson was a like people don't understand how how good he was mm -hmm. because uh I and you know again I don't I don't try to kick anyone I just say what I see mm -hmm. because of the lack of depth discipline from freshman sophomore junior year now you're in your senior year and you get a new coach mm -hmm. who's asking you to be more mm -hmm. asking you to do better you know and then you know Spongy who was Scotty Pippen to me pretty much. You know, he did all the Let's little things. Do, do type stuff. Right. When you lose three kids like that, how do you replace those guys? I mean, we I mean, we actually have people in the waiting that can do the same type things that they do. But we're really worried about that. I mean, of all those guys, you probably miss Derek Carson the most because you got that steady post player. Right. I mean, we got to trade Jackson. He more that finesse uh, from the perimeter. To work inside, but we need that one steady post player that can get you 10, 15 points a game. And I want to say we, uh, a couple games we didn't kind of sputter second or third quarter. Just Derek probably would have got us out those jams. We could maybe to uh, you know put our right. bench or stay afloat until we got our our bears back. Because he definitely was a, a kid that not only played well in the post, but mm -hmm. in the mid range, mid range, right. had, you know, and, and he could and put, put the, the ball, ball in the also. Court. Yeah, right. So of all of them, he probably missed him a little bit more than, than all of them. When 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 you went into the scheduling phase of this season, mm -hmm. what was your process? Tougher schedule, uh, teach continue to teach kids how to win because that's important as well, or you know what we gonna just get a great mixture of games, play really tough teams, uh, medium teams, and I know we can beat this team. Yeah, uh, for the most part, the schedule is pretty much already. Said I guess they've been running the same type schedule two games for, for a long time here. And so I took that base schedule with the regular 1A school, 2A school, and I'd say, man, hold on, we got to increase that. Right. So we didn't add, we had some uh, 4A and 5 As a matter of fact, actually, all the Mississippi teams was 4A and 5A. With, uh, Jefferson County was 4A, Fort Gibson was 4A, Nashville was 5A, and then we took on Ash in the tournament, had the 5A, Ash. Right. Uh, we beat a 3A tie over team. And pray for Franklin Parish for a so we, we increase the competition level. Okay. Why? Why so many Mississippi schools? If, and, and let me give me let me say, if is no quality points to be won from playing out of state schools. Okay. Number one. Number one. I understand that wholeheartedly. But uh, back when I came through, right. Those Mississippi games. Those was those. Firecracker game. Huh? Firecracker game. Firecracker game. Those games. And, and my thing, I was wondering to turn that stuff back into the fold. <laughs> right. It was all, also a heated matchup with Natchez, and, and especially Jefferson County. And uh, Paul Gibson, not as much, but, you know, but I was trying to return that stuff back to old fear. I, I think it was Friday night you guys played a Mississippi team. Natchez. Tell, tell us about that game. Natchez. Uh, same atmosphere as I remember it back in the day. Packed house. Everybody woofing. <laughs> about woofing, you know, uh, anticipation, you know, and that's the kind of feeling I, you know, I wanted to recreate 
Right. And bring back for those the big games back in the day. Big games, big games. So uh, one thing got off to an even start with them and got the second quarter, got just had a little little dry spell and got us down about 12, 14 and, and found ourselves in catch up mode. You know, it made a hell of a comeback. I mean, not two, three minutes, I think we could have pulled it off. Finals go for what, 59, 56, like that. So but <laughs> great environment. I mean, great environment. Great, well, great environment. I, and I think I asked you this before, but I'm going to ask you again just because I can. What's the difference between now as a coach? versus you back in the day when you wore the black and gold and as a player here? I ain't no coach was so, so tough. I mean, because you got to be a, you got to be, I mean, for real, you got to be a, a pastor, you got to be a counselor, <laughs> and you got to be a academic advisor, you know, you got to be a father to some, a mother to some, I mean, you know, all different kind of things. You know, I never realized, my dad was Michael, I never realized he had to go through so much stuff, you got to always, Check people, you know, you pull people to the side, and you, you know that. Hey, man, somebody <laughs> ran about him today. You pull him to the side. So you got to do all that kind of stuff. So back in the day, you just played, you just played, you know, as a player. Bro, you say, say, so, so, you know, I, you know, I talk to a lot of coaches, okay. man, and, and every time I, I probably laugh that I ask that question because. Every coach says the same really? thing. Like, you got to be a daddy, a mom. Everything, huh? You, you got to preach to them a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And, and I think at the end of the day, it all ends up to TLC, tough love and consistency. Mm -hmm. And and that's what they respect. Right, right. They're going to love you back mm -hmm. when you give them that yeah. and not not trying to give them some, um, what's that generic brand of, of uh, Frosted Flakes? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. about. You're talking the, about. That generic brand, that, that badly got a yeah. little sugar <laughs> on it. Yeah. The, the toasted oh, the toasted the toasted cereal, yeah. they ain't even, they not brown, I, brown. They like faded brown. I don't know like, the name. I know exactly what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> they don't want no fade to love. They don't want no fake love, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Let, let, let's talk about um, this season a little bit. Can okay. we do that? You got time? Yes, I got time. All right. Uh, what was the beginning of the season like for you guys? Um, guys, you, you had guys this year that are playing big minutes that didn't have a lot of varsity experience, and you're trying to – guide them and direct them as well as keep the guys who have the in-game experience um, online and in track. Mm -hmm. what's, that, what's that been like? Well, we started this summer, we started, you know, like I say, we did more this summer than we did the prior summer. We did some leagues and everything. We played about 10 games this summer. And you saw this summer, man, participation being maximized, coming to practice and all that kind of stuff. Then the game, played like 10 games and we did real good in those 10 games. We are like nine and one. Uh, played some games over Mississippi, played some games at uh, Northwestern State. Okay. And really good. So we already had that base set with your rotation. And then you start the season. And the first two games, like, oh, man, we tried something that we hadn't worked on this summer, tried full court press and all that kind of stuff. And that didn't work out good with the first two games. <laughs> it worked out well at all. And so we scrapped that, went to a little 11 matchup zone. Yeah. And that was more uh, matchup zone and also just a regular standard press to take advantage of the athletes, the speed, right. the aggressiveness right. that they know, you know, they just naturally just aggressive. So they right. take advantage of all kind of stuff. So once we throw away those last, the first two games, we didn't have a pretty decent season. How, how, how have you gotten them to control that aggressiveness and aggression of, of wanting to be fast, wanting to be physical, to teach them how to calm down and, and just see the game at a regular speed? I try to different philosophy this summer. Mm -hmm. Normally go over a lot of drills. In the past, but I said, man, this this summer, this because part of the problem we had last year, we didn't, we couldn't make basketball plays. Right. We didn't have enough basketball IQ to do things, right. that kind of stuff. So, in just places like we do more five on five type scrimmages or more five on five type drills. So you always got to make decisions and all that kind of stuff like that. So you kind of find up with the summer league games and just playing five on five every day at some point. And then the first couple of games, I think, just over time and the preseason conditioning. And, you know, preseason or training, I think, over time, they just kind of learn that way for the most part. How did you decide which tournaments you wanted them to compete in? Uh, we just won the games. We just won the games for the most part. Sis <laughs> uh, Island was already on the schedule, you know, but I just you know, I said, when we said, let's do Gina, let's do. Uh, Let me ask you this, and I, I know I stopped okay. giving me that. Okay. So haven't you outgrown the Sis uh, Island tournament? Yeah. Fortunately, this is the last year for the tournament. I heard that uh, Friday. Okay. okay. But like I say, a lot of stuff was already set in stone before I 
got here for the most part. And so, like with the uh, GS, GS uh, Clark to me, I was just online in early December. Yeah. And the man like, I need one more team for my... Coach Rick. Yeah, Coach Rick, I need one more team. I <laughs> send me an email real quick. I'm in it. I'm in it. You know, at the same time, I was trying to, I was trying to do some, car, get, get into the tournament car where get, you know, so JS, then play one game in and then catch one or two in car where, but it was already full, so I was right. trying, to, trying to add to it. All right. But I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning to get, I need more control of the schedule next year going forward and everything, and just go on. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, okay? Okay, listen. For the next school you go to and the schedule is also already so-called cement and installed, you're the coach now, you can add the change, you. whatever gotcha. you want. I got you. Nobody can tell you that either. <laughs> <laughs> You're here now. This yeah, is a, this is a time of year that I know for me. I'm I'm a big district fan. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are about to delve in the district. Uh, I think for I know for football, it's probably the last game of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, cousins, uncles, nephews competing against each other. Tonight, you guys got the Vidalia. Vikings, mm -hmm. uh, big rivalry. Um, it's called the Concordia Classic. Okay. Um, talk about a little bit about tonight and growing up as an athlete here, playing mm -hmm. that game versus now, one year, um, first year coaching in the game, and now what you know is going to happen. Well, I don't think the atmosphere is unless you was when we came through, came back up, but I mean. Based on the games last year, it's still a, a big ride, right? Especially you saw the football game. Like my goodness, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of folks at the game, you know. And I think same thing with basketball. Uh, I think we have a good crowd tonight. Uh, I mean, I want to be close. I want to win the game convincingly. Everything. I mean, I think we got a very talented team. I don't. I pretty, pretty much haven't followed by David this year, but uh, still got to play the game. Still got to play the game. Every every I think that's every game. Folks. Every game. Every game on every the game. Stage, you gotta play. Every game you play. I, I like that. You know what I like about you the most? Like you you've been gone from Louisiana forever. Long time. And like I just see the competitive <laughs> Louisiana kid in you as a coach. Like it it it's gleaming out right now. <laughs> like you're in Hog Heaven right now, I think. <laughs> how, how much fun are you having? Uh, I mean, you know, the kids stay out of trouble. I can have a lot of fun. <laughs> stay out of trouble, have a lot of fun. Like I said, you got to police them a lot, a lot more than you anticipated. But I mean, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You know, when you look back, they say, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't look at the rankings like you get a pause once, look at the ranking or Kansas Bluffs. So I look at the rankings for me. You know, they say, oh y'all ain't no thirteen now. I, I don't show no emotion, but I mean, behind closed eyes, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. Making some progress. Real fast and everything. So, now thirteen. It was what thirteen, holding fourteen right now. Bottom line, thirteen. I think right now. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so we making making progress, making progress. Like I say, with some games we could have could have had back, you know. Uh, but it, it, that always happens. Yeah, it always happens. It always happens. That, those are called learning, you know, life lessons. Mm -hmm. Learning life lessons. Hey, I, I, I screwed this up this game, but yeah. we've been I like in this those first, first two games. It's wrong game. But I just trial and error, like I say, you know. You, yeah. you, 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 you still, you still raise hell about the first two games. Nah, not really, cause I'm gonna blame it all on me. I had my game plan for the summer. I said, nah, you know, so I'm gonna, let's go full court man, man, full court man, man. First two games, nah, it didn't work out. It didn't work so, out. so, 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 our, you, you, we around the same, man. Okay. Uh, Remember the cartoon used to come on, the light bulb come over the cartoon character's head. Mm -hmm. Then on one side it said good idea. Oh yeah. On the other they said bad idea. Yeah. That light popped on during the game? Uh soon after the second game. Yeah. Uh, probably the second half of the second game. So, I can't play this way. Can't play this way. I mean we had enough athletes, enough speed. We, we just don't kids just didn't know when to trap or you know, areas to trap in or they run right past a trap sometime for, and they just, you know, just they just didn't know the fundamentals of it all. Right. If we could have did it this summer and transfer it, you know, had enough practice, yeah, could have probably pulled it off. Talk, talk, talk as long as you want uh, about the kids that been instrumental into you guys winning this year. This year, okay. You, I mean, you got Paul Mary. I mean, Swanson. And if you could, if you could have, you know, if you could have saw him this summer down in Port Gibson, I mean. 
I put it, put it this way. His 20 points a game this year is more impressive and more efficient than his 20 last year. His 20 last year, I mean, he probably come with about 15, six, uh, probably actually six, seven shots. But now he kind of playing a little bit slower. He can see a little bit more. He can take right. better shots. And, and But it's overall rebounding. I mean, one game he had a, a triple double. He had like 18 points, like 12 assists, about 10 rebounds, about, 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 seven, about seven blocks that game, for real. Damn. You know, I thought it was an impressive, impre impressive flow game. And one point, I mean, one game he's over nine points. And I told him, man, it's probably the best I've ever seen you play. He's on that nine points. Right. Yeah. But it's just his maturity and growth. Right. All right, you got Keenan uh, Milligan. Uh, Keenan just... He's going to get his 14, 15 points a game, right? Taking a lot of shots, but he's pretty much consistent <laughs> at that and everything. And I think I mean, I think he's the, the heartbeat of the team for the most part because, you know, he's getting mad. And he, he, now he's not scared to get anybody in the face. He'll call you out. He needs to call himself out a lot of time, but he, he ain't scared to call you out for the most part, <laughs> you know. But he's, he's pretty much the heartbeat. And then you got, you got Traylon Jackson, you know, unlimited potential. Uh, I mean, he really came on strong in the past. You throw away that uh, – that J.S. Clark told me, I mean, he had a five, six game straight. We had about 22 points a game, but that J.S. had six points at one game and then zero the next game. That just kind of. That rubbed you off. Yeah, it rubbed us all right. <laughs> like I said, his teammates let him know about it. We had to say nothing. You know, we had to say a, a word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That locker room got loud. Right, yeah. right. A lot, yeah. lot, lot of. Uh... And he took it. And he took it. Oh, he took it. He, took it. he didn't say nothing. He took it. That's a great yeah, sign of growth. It is. It is, and and, it is. and for you, being new to coaching, because you you, you know, when I did my research on you, they said you could put the ball <laughs> in the basket. Yeah. That's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. Okay, y'all, we finna go. We finna go. <laughs> we finna decent. go. I think got about a six five frame, y'all. Yeah, close, pretty, pretty close to it. Yeah. So six five back in the eighties, you know, you you know that. Still to this day, six five doesn't come around very mm -hmm. often, mm -hmm. and, and so when when your dad's the coach, yeah, you can ball. <laughs> hey, we want to thank Coach Sean Davis, Faraday High School Trojans basketball for the little sit down, man. Appreciate you having me. Hey, no, nah, it's cool, man. You my guy. You my guy. Uh, have a great game tonight. Uh, okay. Enjoy yourself, and yes, I look forward to seeing the game. I appreciate it. No doubt. Okay. Thank you, man. Remember, get off the bench, get into the game.